Look at the clock. It's now 4.17 a.m. on the Korean Peninsula. Quite an incredible sight we showed you that unfolded smack in the middle of the infamous 38th parallel, a.k.a. no man's land between North and South Korea. North and South Korean leaders Kim Jong-un and Moon Jae-in vowing to end the Korean War and rid the Korean Peninsula of all nuclear weapons. Meanwhile, over at the White House, oh, yes, they did. Shake hands. German Chancellor Angela Merkel meeting President Trump at the White House in hopes of averting a trade war between the European Union and the U.S. This coming just two days after French President Emmanuel Macron failed to sway President Trump, despite three days of meeting and dining and air kissing between the two and their wives. So with so many diplomatic pieces moving at this hour and as key issues like trade hang in the balance, we wanted to bring you somebody who knows a thing or two about U.S. relations with many countries, but specifically Germany. The former U.S. ambassador to Germany also served as the former U.S. Deputy Treasury Secretary, Ambassador Robert Kimmett, joining us now. Good to see you, Ambassador. Thank you, Liz. First to the dramatic development on the Korean Peninsula. I keep thinking th this looks great, but just four months ago, this was the leader who warned he could wipe out and destroy any U.S. city, and now Kim Jong-un promises full denuclearization. Is this genuine disarmament? Do you believe him? Liz, I come from a military family. My father fought in Korea. My brother served in Korea. I was at the DMZ with Ronald Reagan in 1983. Those images this morning were dramatic, but you're correct. The issues remain very difficult. I think the question is, is this all rhetoric or do we move to results? We're very fortunate that our new Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, already has met and has a relationship with the North Korean leader. But there are very, very difficult days ahead to find out whether this is rhetoric alone or can we move to results that are in the interest of both the Korean people on both sides of the 38th parallel, as well as the region and the United States. Uh, I can't believe I did not know that your father served. First of all, what, what a background. I know you went to West Point, too. But uh, as we look at this man shaking hands, this is the guy who f killed his uncle and fed him to dogs. I, I just find this very, very suspicious. And I'm glad President Trump is also taking a cautious view of this. Um, before we move to Germany, what do you think will, will get President Trump what he wants? And that is a full denuclearization promise and action. We have to be very mindful of the past, also of this leader of North Korea. We have to deal, though, with the facts as they are today. And we face a strategic threat from the North Korea and nuclear and missile programs. That has to be the heart of what we do. And then we have to ask what is right for today's citizens in both North and South Korea. Mm -hmm. I think our position is clear. Uh, theirs seems to be a bit more forward leaning. But again, whether that is just rhetoric or he is prepared to move to results that is North Korean leader, we'll find out in these tough weeks ahead. Let's get to Germany and Angela Merkel. Uh, clearly, she and Macron have not yet been successful in convincing President Trump to make May 1st, so we're days away from this, a permanent exemption for the European Union from steel tariffs. What do you think he's doing? What's his game plan and what would get them there? And should we permanently exempt the European Union from the tariffs? One of the real key points here is that we have leaders of both countries discussing not just the traditional political military issues, but also economic and financial issues. Back in my day as ambassador to Germany and certainly before that, Ronald Reagan, then George H.W. Bush, and talking with Helmut Kohl, it was almost all political military issues. I think the key is we now have economic and financial issues being discussed at the highest level. You're right, Mrs. Merkel, nor the president did not want to preview what might happen next Tuesday. But the president has had a chance to hear directly from Europe's two most powerful leaders mm -hmm. to take that into account. I thought it was quite interesting uh, that Mrs. Merkel also mentioned dialogue that was going on between Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and her finance minister. And so I would say the economic issues are front and center, even though there was also some very important uh, security mm -hmm. news coming out of the meeting. Well, let's, let's not forget that Germany makes a lot of cars here in the U.S. and exports them, but they do employ United States workers. And I've been down to the Vance, Alabama Mercedes plant, and we can't forget that we do have a very good relationship with Germany. Give me your quick over-under. You think that, that they'll get it May 1st, permanent exemption? 
Hard to say. And again, uh, if the president was for wasn't prepared to talk about today, nor the chancellor to hazard a guess. I'm not um, in a position to say, but Liz, you brought up a really good point. 800,000 Americans will get their paychecks this month from companies headquartered in Germany. You mentioned uh, Daimler uh, in Vance, Alabama. We've got Volkswagen in Chattanooga. We have BMW in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I was there in Munich in 1992 when Helmut Kohl and George H.W. Bush witnessed the decision of uh, BMW to go to South Carolina. Germany has taken some steps last yeah, year to reduce sure the trade deficit. Much more needs to be done. Uh, hard to predict what's going to happen Tuesday.